So today we will be discussing five key elements that I have found to be useful in a successful launch of a business. Now, before we proceed, there will be three golden rules. And this is my icebreaker as well. Rule number one, have an open heart and mind. It is very difficult to pour new wine in old goat skin, according to the old adage. And I need for you to think about a cup, a cup being three quarter full, a cup being uh, all the way to the brim, and then having someone attempt to pour new information, or to pour new substance into that cup. What will end up happening in most cases, well, what will end up happening is overflow. And the new information will find its way out sooner than you can think. So in this essence, uh, persons, I, I urge that you have an open heart, an open mind, so that we can, and so we can have you know, enough room to expand your contacts and build on your content. This does not mean you have to agree with everything that I say, all right? In fact, much growth occurs when persons have cordial, cordial disagreements. Number two, play to win. Now there are four ways to play. You can refuse to play, all right? And that would have been the case with much of our friends who may have been invited and did not show up. Fair enough. You can pretend to play, which is pretty dangerous, which is being here this evening and, have, or, and having no intention to leave with anything of value or to do or implement anything that you are here today to listen to. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, this would simply be uh, a wastage of not only your time, but of course, uh, your resource that you could have probably spent better elsewhere. Rule number three, playing not to lose. Playing not to lose puts us in a difficult position. In other words, there is no room for growth. I have never witnessed growth taking place when an individual is comfortable. In order for us to grow as entrepreneurs, we have to be able, or we have to be willing, sorry, to come out of our comfort zones. And that brings us to the way to play number four, which is playing to win. Playing to win means simply, we are here today to give 100%, not five, not 10, not 50, but 100%. And last but not least, all of this that will be shared tonight would be for naught if there is no implementation. If there is no implementation, we will basically have found ourselves in a difficult position where our time has been wasted. And at the end of the evening, I can only hope that entrepreneurs who are here under my voice, they can at least find one thing that they can functionally move forward with to improve their chances of having a successful launch of their business. All right? Simply because in life, on the journey as an entrepreneur, there is never a 
perfect moment. So in that instance, I can only urge you guys to take one step at a time, take things one step at a time, because it is more about progression and not perfection. Persons who are waiting for perfection are often those who remain waiting and staying in one spot while everything goes by. As the great Lao Tzu stated, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Now, why is this important? Why am I here this evening? Ladies and gents, my story is a simple one. I am a former collegiate athlete, and I would have spent most of my time balancing between the lines of a football field and the walls of a classroom for this thing we call life. One that I originally thought meant that good grades and being diligent had working and had working will bring the better things or the finer things in life. I am a married father of three wonderful kids. Well, they are most times. And I had a decent enough job, all that the typical man could have asked for. I thought I was doing well enough. And this was until 2018 came. And just like a thief in the night, a company that I would have rested much of my future provisions for providing for my family folded in what seemed to be an overnight and a spectacular debacle. And just like that, and like for so many other of my fellow co-workers, we were now all faced with picking up the pieces from a seemingly comfortable enough life. And it was at this point I decided that I had to choose a different path to secure the future of not just me, but a family who entrusted me to not only provide, but to safeguard their futures. Now, entering into the world of entrepreneurship was my decision. And trust me, it was not as glossy as advertised. However, it is, in my opinion, one of the best places to be if you have a dream, you are willing to give exceptional service to your fellow man and work relentlessly to add value, finding solutions for the betterment of those who are destined to come after you. Yes, that is, ladies and gentlemen, our future. The major issue faced is that there is no exact science in achieving, in achieving a success as an entrepreneur. And I am simply here to provide some insight of a few things, a few elements that I would have found would have made uh, so much difference, so much more difference, and more importantly, save on the cost of learning some hard lessons. So the goal is simple, to help improve the quality of your decision making and establish a proper foundation for your entrepreneurial growth. Now, I hope you have your pen and paper at hand. There are things shared here tonight that you may already know. But my prayer for you is that at least if there are things that you may have simply overlooked in the past or by chance not know at this point, that you write it down and you make that your golden nugget moment. As golden rule number three stated, implement. This golden nugget is simply for you to implement. So I need you to write down this to me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I'll take my time with it. Looking on, listening intently, 
and writing exquisite notes and not learning. I only learn when I implement. I repeat that again. I only when, learn, sorry, when I implement. So where do we start? Where do you start? We start here with three concentric circles, one inside the other. And I want you to look at the words. First one being what, the other being how, and the most important part, or the most important, the most important component of the concentric circles that you are seeing before you is the who. In fact, the most important part of the successful launch of your business is you. Which, which brings us to key element number one, the proper mindset. Every human being, sorry, as a man think it, a man's mind may be likened to a garden which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild. But whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce their kind, James Allen simply states that what we think, how we think, what occupies our thoughts will bring itself into the physical. In other words, our thoughts are very positive. And much of our thoughts are based on our belief. So what are beliefs, all right? Our beliefs determine how much of our potential we use. Uh, if you look at the top left-hand corner, you would see that each section is a function of the other. In other words, they are not independent. They are all interrelated, all interrelated sorry, and as a result, we require each step to functionally move forward and have our greatest chance of being successful as entrepreneurs because our beliefs, all right, feeds into our potential. The potential we use shape the actions that we take and the actions the action, sorry, that we, we do. Excuse us, thank you very much, Jason. Yes, and the actions that we, we do reflect how much of the potential we use. And there, in fact, thereafter, shape the results we get. Now, the results we get, our results reflect the actions we took and further shapes the beliefs we hold. And of course, this now ties back in to our beliefs and each one feeds the other. So I want you to think for a moment. If you have limiting beliefs, what will be the eventuality you will be faced with? The life of an entrepreneur is not an easy one. In fact, the law of belief dictates that persons achieve what they believe they have already done. All right. You are, each entrepreneur is the sum total of all their thoughts. So it will serve you best in no shortened way or in no form or no other form to believe in yourself. For what you believe yourself to be, you are. 
what you believe yourself to have done already, you accomplish. And as Norman Vincent Peale stated, you need to have faith in your abilities. With, without a humble but reasonable confidence in your own powers, you cannot be successful or be happy. And the life of an entrepreneur at times can be a lonely one. So if everyone else don't, at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself. Now, where do we get our beliefs from? Now, beliefs come from multiple sources. And our environment, starting off with our environment, if you look at the chart that we have before us, five key, five key, five key sorry, sources were highlighted. And the most or the single most potent generator of belief is our environment. This is not limited to where we live, but has everything to do with what occupies our mind and who we choose to associate with. Quite simply, you have a choice. Your surroundings might have an effect on you. However, it is in your mind. You can either choose to be trapped in a ghetto or choose to live in a fortress that has an, an oasis that fuels you, that supports you, that drives you to achieve your dreams. Another source of our beliefs come from events, whether small or large. Now, I'm pretty sure much of us could remember the events of September 9-11. In fact, it was the day that much of the earth stood still. And events of this nature, this one being, of, of course, um, grand in scale, but every little event that would have happened contributes to your belief. And it is up to you, the entrepreneur, to determine how much you allow those beliefs from those events to limit or propel you forward. Knowledge is also another source. And this belongs to what we would have learned along the way first time. Our past results also contribute to what we believe in. And it determines how much or the capacity we think ourselves to be able to get to. However, last but not least, the functional source of beliefs that as entrepreneurs we have to rely on in our journey is our future vision. This is the source that, we'll have, that we will have to depend on to intuitively guide us during our entrepreneurial journey. In fact, we have to create in our mind the experience we desire in the future as if it were here now. Now, how do we get there? How do we achieve this? How do we go to the future? I'm not sure if my, 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 my generation X's, I hear my millennials, all right? But we reach to the second concentric circle, the how, but, all right? And the question you will have is, you know, how do we get there? How, do, how does the future, you know, where do we experience this, the results, of course, that we would wish for in advance. 
And many of you um, could possibly know this image, what this image represents. You know, last time I checked, you know, it, it, it was the vehicle that was used to, to get back to the future. And of course, the, the enterprising gentleman um, would have traveled to the past, but no, that is not the vehicle that we're gonna take, ladies and gentlemen, to get us to the future, all right? Fortunate for us, the place that we have to go also provides the vehicle for us to get there. And this beautiful place is our mind. And in there lies the beautiful and somewhat overlooked, and in some cases even forgotten, power of the second key element, which is the vision. So at the beginning of your entrepreneurial life, before we even look at the launch of our business, first key element is our beliefs. This definitely has to be strong in order to propel us past some of the terror barriers in which we are going to face. But the vision, the vision is what allows us as entrepreneurs to go forward in the journey. In fact, in the beginning of any business, the entrepreneur must have a vision. A vision provides a sense of purpose and direction for the business. The vision will help you to define your short and long-term goals and guide the decisions you make along the way. And what I need for you to, to do is picture, to, is to even, even envision a ship at a port without a destination and without you, the entrepreneur, who is the helmsman. So the destination is your vision and you, the entrepreneur, you are the helmsman. What is the likelihood of having a successful journey? Chances are slim to impossible. As the great book says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Likewise, where there is no vision, the entrepreneurial dream itself in itself will also perish. So what do we do now? That brings us to the outer layer, the third layer of our concentric circle. So we will have talked about the who being you. We will talk about the how being utilizing the vehicle of the vision, the vision, sorry. And now we are at the what. After much thought and visions of grandeur, you know, these things give birth to ideas of how we want to change the world. Now with these ideas firmly affixed in the mind and the entrepreneurial bag packed. You know, is the entrepreneur ready to take on the world? Are you ready to now take on the world? I'm sorry, but you have to wait because you are not there just yet. This brings us to key element number three, this grand idea that you now have. There are things to consider before you move forward. Now to succeed in business, entrepreneurs have to be either mad 
And when I mean mad, not the type of mad where we have to come and, and, and get some persons, uh, um, some medical professionals to, to come and tie you down and, and take you off to St. Anne's. But, but more so, we have to, and that is an acronym for M, meet a need, A, add value, D, do something different. I would have gotten this uh, from a, a business mentor of mine. Uh, it, it would have took me from just performing tasks and allowed me to now functionally be in a position to have an overview of what my business is doing, what value my business is adding. And this would have helped me curate how I bring across my conversations when I'm dealing with my prospects and my clients, nice? So even though we have our ideas, we have to ensure that they meet a need, I repeat. And if you have a pen and paper, if you're screenshotting out there, you know, I, ask, I, I plead you of you uh, to, to screenshot the slide. So we have to meet a need, we have to add value, and we have to do something different. You know, there are, in business, there's always going to be competition. But as my mentor always states, you know, my coach always states that it is our duty to be creative. Because at the end of the day, there is only one you. And there's only one person who would be able to do the things the way that you do that. And that is you. And that is your creative and your competitive advantage. And I know I mentioned the word either. So it's you are either mad or you're ready to play mass. <laughs> and no, it's, it's not jumping up uh, in, in, in the band on Juve morning. All right. It's simply the other acronym, which brings us to similarly meeting a need, adding value, but in this case, solving a problem. Now the pandemic would have brought about uh, many upheavals. It would have brought about a huge discomforts. It would have changed the way we would have done, done a vast many things, changed paradigms or what have you. And the average person would look at it and see all the problems. Now it is the job or one of the jobs of the of entrepreneur. You know, this is where we function best. You know, this is where we, as they say, we glow is where we are able to solve a problem. And if that is the case, well then this time in this moment is the best time to be an entrepreneur. I'm not bragging about it, but with problems comes great opportunities and opportunities are what entrepreneurs are there to capitalize on. Nice. So you feel you're ready. You think you're ready to go on. Unfortunately, we are not just there, there yet. Now, in order to bring these important components together, entrepreneurs will need a simple document, which brings us to our key element number four, the business plan. Now, any Googling genius, and we have, I know we have a lot of them out there, any Googling genius can come up with a number of ways to produce a business plan, all right? And in fact, in session number four, we will delve deeper into the topic. But all for now, all right, we will just take note of it. Um, however, I will move forward to give uh, the simplest definition that I would have been able to find. And 
there are so many more. As I say, simply typing, what is a business plan reveals countless articles. But in this case, I say to you, and you can, you can screenshot if you would like. In fact, I urge you, a business plan is a written, it is not a talked about document. It is a written document that describes in detail how a business will go about managing its resources. It outlines the goals and it details how the entrepreneur plans to achieve these goals or those goals. As the old adage goes, nothing written, nothing said. In fact, most of the books, most of the self-help books uh, that entrepreneur has to read urges the entrepreneur to write. In fact, that was one of the greatest lessons I would have learned in my journey. Being, a, I would say, an athlete, being always in the act of made me lose sight of the importance of writing. And it was to my detriment. This, as I always tell my, my children, lead is longer than memory. And it took me uh, a dose of entrepreneurship, failures, to realize that I had to take a dose of my own medicine. So there is no ways around it. As an entrepreneur, uh, I have my, and I will show you, I have my, my book always at hand. Anywhere I go, it's always there to write something, to write some golden nugget you would have seen on a, on a trip, some golden nugget you would have, you know, would have learned based on a mistake, some golden nugget that you would have, you would have had the, the pleasure of, of extracting in, in conversation. So I urge you, my fellow entrepreneurs, yes, key element number four tells us a business plan, but that should signify to you the overall need to become writers, not just speakers, but writers. In order to map our journey, we have to know where we, and then move forward, we have to know where we came from. And we would not be able to functionally achieve that if there is nothing to look back onto. So that is key element number four. And that in itself takes us to the three steps. As I say, in this session, we will be looking at, you know, just the simple overview. Uh, in session number four, we will delve, we will dive deeper into an actual business plan and the components thereof. Uh, but in this case, we would look at the three steps that are required in organizing a business plan. Right, step number one, the business idea, what we spoke about. Remember that it has to be mad, not crazy, mad. Meet a need, add value, and do something different, or has to be mass, or you have to be ready to play mass, which is meet a need, add value, or solve a problem. Those are the key things to consider when we are dealing with step number one, our business idea. Step number two takes us to research. Now, in our writing of our business plan, there are certain measures that will need to, be, will need to take place certain components, certain issues, certain um, factors we will have to do research on. Running out blind into the battlefield can only end up in the demise of a soldier. And at times, the entrepreneurial journey is like war. In fact, many may say it is like war. It is vicious. It is relentless. It requires due diligence. So there are things that you have to consider. 
you have to consider what is your competitive advantage. What do you do that no one else could? You have to consider the market you're in. Is it a winning market? Is it going to grow? Or is it dying? Is your business idea scalable? Are there any limiting factors that would prevent you from multiplying your efforts? Have you looked at them? Do you, where do you plan for your business to go? Who do you plan for your business to reach? Are you talking about your local market where you are at present? Are you talking from a national standpoint? Or do you want to go international? Are you charging what your product is worth? We will dive into this in our second session because in the entrepreneur world, there are high volumes of competition where persons are bargaining for the best price. Although that may be the case for many, uh, I'm of the firm belief that price or trying to have the, the lowest price in itself becomes unsustainable. And we will look closer into which is more valuable, price or profit margins. Stay tuned in our next session. Who are your competitors? What are they doing? What are your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities? your threats. Yes, this is your standard SWOT analysis. Who is your team? Do you have a mentor? What is your technical support? I have no idea about the balance sheet. Well, yes, I do, you know, but putting it together, I have to depend on someone else who has that technical expertise. And as one of my mentors would have stated, you know, notice I would have many of them. Some are alive, some are not here. But one of my mentors would have said, it is for us to focus on our strengths and as much as possible, cover our weaknesses. A lot of us might spend time trying to be perfect and trying to be great at everything or good at everything and master of none. And this is not an entrepreneur trap you want to find yourself in. Now, if you haven't guessed it, and if you don't have it, you need to figure out where you are going to get it. All right? And, and this comes with, with, with everything that you would have analyzed. And we come to the step number three, where we are planning, where it comes to the planning of our resources, our resources, our supplies, our, the, the budget we are working with, our finances, um, workers, how are we gonna source our workers? If we need workers, how many workers we require, you know, um, the logistics of moving around uh, if we're in the product base or the retail based business, you know, our logistics, how do we plan to manage and, and, and I, I would say in some cases, um, not be a magic one, but how we, how we plan to, to pull a rabbit of our, out of our hats? What, what are our plans? Should we need uh, an item on short notice? So planning of our resources is very important. All right. And of course, we will expand on, on these things uh, in, in greater in, in a greater, more in-depth fashion in session number four. So I look, I'm looking forward for you guys joining me there. And last but not least, the key element, I call it key element number five. Number five to stay alive, number five to try to have any chance of being successful we have to implement. I know it would have been one of the rules I would have stated up front, but 
it is very important for us to know that the journey of entrepreneur requires us to be action takers. It requires us to be diligent, persistent, relentless action takers geared towards increasing our value, which entails would increase the levels of service that we are able to present to our fellow man and make a notable difference in the world we live in and the world that our future generations, which is our children, will live in. So implementation is the most important step, might be last, but not the least element when it comes to us launching a successful business or successfully rather launching a business. Remember, that implementation is key, but the key part, and this is a segue to our second session, the key part of any successful business is people. Business is all about people. If you're not in the business to help people, well then you just might be in the wrong business altogether. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I hope my five elements would have brought a measure of further understanding to help those who are thinking about it, to help those who might have already been along the way and might have met some speed bumps, might help those who might have been seasoned in entrepreneurship, would have helped you guys to at least get a greater understanding or some greater understanding uh, that golden nugget moment that would allow you to do something differently, to tweak something, you know, to increase the value somewhere that can make all the difference in you being a successful entrepreneur. That being said, that's the end of my presentation. I look forward to the questions, Nerissa, if they have any. Thank you guys so much. You can reach me. Thank you, Mary. For that um, presentation, Ms. Lara, grateful for your time this evening. Um, we are now two minutes late, but we would allow at least fifteen minutes for question and answer. So I'm going to allow persons to um, unmute their mics um, now and ask questions of Mr. Lara. So, folks. Just a disclaimer, or there, Nerissa. Uh huh. And it's a it's a disclaimer. Uh, of course, based on on, on my um, <laughs> expertise, I, I let you know that everything is my opinion, and there are recommendations, you know, and it is only to help you um, functionally think about something in a different way. Of course, it is not me telling you what to do. It's just a recommendation. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Lara. <laughs> so folks, um, please, any questions, you'll have the, the opportunity now. So I see the Bowens, they have their hands up. Um, so you can unmute and ask your questions. Hi, good night, everyone, once again. Good night to you. Um, Mr. Lara, um, are you, would you be interested in being a mentor or are you on, on that level of being a mentor to anybody that is embarking on this new entrepreneur journey? Fantastic question. Um, the answer is most certainly, and, and when I say that, I am part of a a really powerful and, and, and strong group. The journey as an entrepreneur requires you to not do things on your own. I have a, a coach, he's right here with me. 
And it seems as though he's always there with me with every step that I take as well. Um, I hope he could wave his hands to the crowd. Um, Coach TJ, Coach Trevor James. You know, um, he, he, he and I, as, as well as a lot of uh, other, it's a circle. So yes, Miss Miss Bowen, Ms. I don't know if it's Bo right. I have to assume it's Bowen and not Bowen. Yes, Miss Bowen, I am there. Um, we functionally have uh, a, a tight knit group that offers services, a mentor mentorship services for new and inspiring entrepreneurs, as well as those who have been there, turned back, uh, have, as as included as well those who are functionally um, on their way. You know, everyone requires a measure of, of, of support in, in this journey. I hope that answers your question. We have another one from Sandra Grandi Civic Center. Go ahead and unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi, good night, Ms. Solara, and thanks again Top for being team. part of the entrepreneurship program. Thank I you. have two questions. My first question is, what business are you into? And my second question is, knowing what you know now, is there anything you would have done differently when you first started our business? Fantastic question. All right. Well, what I do is that I provide digital marketing services. And when I say digital marketing services, consultancy. So we do strategic um, marketing plans. Uh, we help with the implementation of those marketing plans. You know, so, so we take entrepreneurs um, from concept to, to launch, so to speak, um, from, from a digital marketing standpoint. Uh, we also help with an overall business plan, but of course, um, our main focus is, is the digital marketing aspect of it. Uh, that, that's where my service lies. What I would have done differently 2018 would have been me functionally uh, launching into the, into the world of entrepreneurship. And it was just me going out and acting, trying to perform actions uh, because uh, the focus was primarily on A, how am I now going to make up for this lost income? You know, and it would have taken me away from some, some key aspects. And, and, and the, the key aspect for me in all of this was, was belief. Um, and when I say belief, uh, it, it's, that it was, and that is in itself very powerful because your belief um, can really limit yourself, can really shorten your confidence, um, can, can really affect the quality of service that you provide to others. Um, in my case, I was able to recognize that shortcoming and I would have, you know, inadvertently, I would say, but nothing happens by coincidence. I would have in, inadvertently come across and, and would have had the pleasure of um, getting on board with, um, with a life and peak performance coach. You know, that made all, all the difference. Um, to me, and it would have now put me in a, in a position to now really give a high quality service, knowing that uh, A, I am not the enemy of myself, you know? So that, that was just, that's my, my experience. Um, I hope that answers, I hope that helps. Yes, it does. But that alludes me to another question. Sure. What challenges did you have to overcome at the beginning of, of your journey? <laughs> some, spe some spectacular questions tonight. Um, well, every entrepreneur first face after having that idea, you know, um, in, in that case, you would have your, your, your vision because vision is always there. Um, the first challenge you, you face is a, am I ready? Uh, especially when you would have not come from uh, a background that 
uh, traditionally would have done business as a form of income. You know, uh, my parents did well by me. You know, I, I love them to death. They would have done tremendous for all of our siblings. However, much of what was learned um, from my traditional settings did not prepare me or could not have prepared me for this, this world of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship or entrepreneurism, depending on how you want to look at it. And that in itself is a, a huge barrier, a huge river to cross. And when I say huge, not to stress on the huge, but it is for you to not take lightly that it is important that you not only look within yourself, because a lot of us are looking at the fastest way to implement, you know, thinking that we, we, we need a result now. And in that short term thinking, we shortchange ourselves in the long run, nicely. And what we don't see up front is that there is a larger cost. All right, you may not pay for it in the beginning, but certainly you pay for it somewhere along the line. And it could even derail your entire uh, business dream is that if you don't invest in yourself, investing in yourself, I mean, it's not only reading, uh, not only surrounding yourselves with persons of like mind and, and like ill, um, having mentors is all well and good, but just like, uh, be, uh, and I would like in the term to my time being a, an athlete, even though we have great skill, we still need a coach. You know, we need a coach who would be able to see things um, holistically, you know, objectively, and, and give us those key, those key little, um, I, I, I call them, you know, da, move, da moments, you know, like da, you know, it's right there in front of you, but you're overlooking at those, those key little moments that helps, you know, bring you to, a, and, and they might seem small, but their effects are so large um, that, that helps bring you to a place where you can, you know, function not as an individual trying to hustle, you know, that hustler type mentality, but as an individual now bringing value and working together to improve not only yourself, but those around you. Um, I don't know if, well, I hope that answers the question you would have asked. You can let me know. Thank you. Yes, it does. Okay, I'm seeing um, Anil has his hands up. Anil, you can go ahead. Hi, good evening to everyone. Mr. Desi Lara, how are you, my brother? Top of the evening, my brother. A blessed and prosperous one to you. Ah, uh, right back at you, right back at you, right down to business. Um, <laughs> as you know, how, 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 we, how we do it. Um, I want to say um, two things. One is a comment, one is a question. First, let me, let me ask you a question. Um, in your professional opinion and capacity, what do you think um, the authorities or the government in particular, um, you know, what are they missing or what are they not doing um, with regards to um, developing redeveloping or reinventing a fresh perspective um, towards entrepreneurism um, for young people who may want to take that leap. Because, you know, you made a point um, about your company, about taking it from concept to launch, right? Um, now, we just, you have discussed so many things and you have touched on so many things from, um, you know, um, the life coaching, um, also doing a lot of reading, applying yourself, you know, those short changes up and stuff like that. Um, so what do you think the government needs to do or the authorities need to do in order to revamp this um, whole idea of entrepreneurism? All right. Well, and I would say this in, in my limited capacity because I don't claim to know all things. Um, but it is my opinion that... Uh, a, a lot of a lot of persons may think that 
the, the, the government, and I mean, yes, they, they share some, some role, some responsibility. I think they can do a, a lot more uh, in schools to prepare uh, the younger ones uh, for, for not just being ready to be employed, but to functionally be able to be employers as well. Uh, because an employee who has an employer mindset, uh, for me, operates differently. They will understand um, the, the value of great customer, well, great exceptional customer service. You know, an uh, employee with an uh, employee who, but someone who works within a, a company and has an uh, entrepreneurial mindset or has. Uh, a business, uh, business mindset will understand that everything you do, whether you be a secretary, whether you be on the front line dealing with customers, uh, whether you be in sales, it, it doesn't matter. Everything you do within an organization, you know, is is important for that organization to not only provide a service, but for that organization to live, I want to say to live, to create a legacy whereby um, you remain employed, <laughs> long and short of it. Um, so, so definitely a, a couple more things, uh, you know, more programs in schools, um, conversations about financial literacy and all these other things uh, could definitely take place or take more or take place in, in greater amounts in schools, having the dedicated um, subject times for it. Uh, however, um, the government could only do so much. And individuals, and I, I say this without, without apologies, uh, individuals could also do a, a, a bit more for themselves. And, and when I say that, being an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneurial, um, innately, we, we understand that at some point, we have to be of more value and just not be comfortable with just living, you know? So yes, the government could do more, but I also believe that um, it's not a matter of depending on the government. It is also a, a matter of, you know, maximizing on the resources that we have at hand. As far as I know, uh, much of uh, public schools or schooling still remains uh, free here in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, yes, they are limited in so many things that they teach, but it provides a, a platform for individuals uh, like you, myself, um, for anyone who wants to make a difference to, to learn and grow. Vitep, um, there are a couple ministry-based ministry programs. Uh, the, the individual has to take a responsibility uh, as well in this matter. Thank you very much. Um, just to finish off the point, you know, I just want to say that I, I agree with you and I share that view and I believe that value is something that um, we need we need to redefine as well in light of the in, in, in of the conversation. And also I believe, you know, that um yes, I think that um, you know, in the as individuals and thinkers, we have the responsibility as well to make to make things happen too. And Madam Chair, just allow me just to share this one comment. Um to the listeners out there. Um sorry, um Desi, I, I came on late. I had some other commitments. But I wanna say to you all that um I have been I've contracted the services of Mr. Lara and, um, you know, it has been a tremendous journey for me, um, taking one of my ideas, um, you know, from, from concept to launch, we, which we intend to do very soon. And I just want to say that the impact of life coaching and the impact of sharing your space and your ideas with like-minded people goes a very, very long way for you as budding entrepreneurs and for us, you know, who have who got the concept and who are getting ready to launch. So, Mr. Lara, um, all um, kudos to you and um, your presentation. Madam Chair, back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna.
Thank you very much, Anil, for that contribution. I'm seeing the Bowen's hand up again. Um, I'm not sure if it's if it's just um if they have another question. Yes, um, I do we, have another question. Sure. Just a minute. Um, we just we are at eight fifteen. Um, we were supposed to finish at eight, so we added fifteen minutes for question and answer. So um, can we um <laughs> condense it so that we can finish better? <laughs> At appropriate time. You, um, you guys can show my number again. And if you want any extra questions, you can feel free to WhatsApp uh, me or call me. Sure, sure. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mr. Lara, does your company only provide services in terms of setting business plans for a certain sector, or do you all provide services across the board? All right. Um, well, my expertise, as I say, uh, main, relies mainly in the digital marketing aspect um, of, a, of a business, so to speak. But of course, that is not where I limit myself. You know, uh, we are able to functionally help um, businesses, you know, startups, um, those who are, you know, small micro, you know, look at their, their, their business plan, you know, and, and functionally um, consult and, and optimize, in most cases, add value. Because at the end of the day, we, we, we look at putting a company in a position to maximize on their resources, right? Nice? So whatever that entails, um, of course, it all starts with us functionally um, looking at, at the plan, looking at your product, looking at your offers, and, and then working away you now to, to make that uh, in itself a dynamic offer. Now, these are terms that I use, but just to, do that, just to break it down slightly, is that at the end of the day, whatever you are presenting, whether it be product or service, all right, we help to maximize the resources that you take to present that product to your clientele. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, we aim to increase uh, your your revenues. You know, the the company's logo is finding our customer, or finding our clients' unique solution. Uh, so, that being said, just you you just, I mean, if, feel free to reach me. I don't know if you have my number, um, and anyone else. Um, I'm here and ready and available for us to, to sit down and chat. Okay, have a so, chat. Um, the number was placed in the chat and we continue to ask persons to put their email addresses or contact information in the chat so that we can get information on to you all. Um, it's now 8.18 and I see that Mr. Um, Mr. Jude, no, like I forget. <laughs> QP success. I see your no. mic. <laughs> okay, so I saw your uh, mic. No, so I thought you wanted to um. Mic, to mic, I just on. Okay. <laughs> are, are you hearing me clearly, Beth? Yeah. I'm hearing you loud and clear. Okay. Um, just want to say an interesting session. Um, I'm excited uh, to be the coach. <laughs> um, there's, there's something that for people who are listening and who stayed on the call, you stayed on for a reason. I just want to highlight something that um, I'm going to ask about the government and um, that information was shared back. One of the things we need to be aware of is that the government cannot give you an idea. The, the role and function of, of, of the government in these programs and spend times on boards and governments and, and that sort of thing. You know, and what people need to pay attention to is that you must be idea driven. And that's one of the things that Mr. Lara spoke about. If, if, you know, when you come to the table with a product or a service, yeah, it, it's an idea. And a lot of times people are looking for handout. Entrepreneurs don't receive handout. Entrepreneurs come with ideas. That, that's what they come with. And they come with an idea in the form of a product or a service or help improve the quality of a product and the quality of a service. 
So an entrepreneur, not someone who's always come with a new thing all the time, but they can help improve what's there already. You know, if we look at Facebook, somebody who was my space only for Facebook, Facebook is there now, and there are other things that will keep coming. So the, the, the ideas and the concept, the information that Mr. Lara was sharing is, is, is basically to, to get us to take the first initial step. Because too many times we're looking for money, you know, even from the government, to deal with the, the well, I want to open my business, but I have no money. If you're willing to open my business with money, I'm good news for this afternoon, you will never be successful. Because money is not the key to solving a business. Ideas are the currency of success, not money. Ideas are the things. You get an idea. So he had an idea and he put that idea to work, even though there are other people doing other things in the same particular area. So that that is what the, the, the driving force is. If you're sitting there and you have an idea, it is time to bring that idea to fruition. Quit sitting down on it. You need to begin to move on. Don't get, as you said, don't get any if they, those those uh, Dalton and Thomases, you know, get with people who can say, "Well, I can help you. This is what you need to do." Well, let's let's begin to move, because entrepreneurs are a rare, strange breed of people. We do things that others don't want to do. It's just that simple. We do things that others don't want to do. So there's thank you for the information. Look forward to uh, being of any help. Keep the flags flying. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Mr. James. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lara. Um, we're going to close off now. And if anybody wants to ask anything after we have closed, no problem. You all can stay on and do so. Um, Thank you very much, Desi, for this presentation this evening. And I know that persons are intrigued and they will come on next week to hear what you have in store for them. Folks, I thank you very much for taking up the information as well and being on with us this evening, Tuesday, the 9th of November, within the week of Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, all the best to you all, my colleagues, Manripo and Sangri Grandi. Thank you for working and getting people um, knowledgeable about what we're doing at the complexes and See you folks next week, please go and invite your friends and relatives to come on. The information is beneficial to everyone. And as Mr. Lara says, you need a team. So bring your team. <laughs> okay. Any closing remarks, the um, Desi? Of course. Um, <laughs> besides bidding all you know, a, a good night and a productive and a rest of a productive week until we meet again, um, on our next appointed date. There is homework. You know, no, no, no good session goes without homework. There are the three golden rules that I urge, I don't know if you would have had them before, but I urge for you to remember them because they will be quizzed upon that on our next meeting. And as well, um, I would have mentioned that golden nugget moment. Ladies and gents, I hope that if you did not receive one or if you didn't take time to write down one during the session, during the next two weeks, I'm pretty sure some will pop up now based on your new, um, your new insight into the world of entrepreneurism. And also come with that golden nugget moment, come with your ideas, um, and, and let's have a conversation, a functional conversation on our next meet. Yeah? So... Until then, a blessed and prosperous evening to you all. Thank you. Good night, everyone.